Now, the main pack itself actually will separate from this water pack. There's a little clip that hooks these together and there's molly straps all around this pack which are good for a lot of things. I can hook different things on here. As you can see I have a carabiner on this side and that is a, a D-lock carabiner made out of heavy duty aluminum and then I have another carabiner on this side, just a mini carabiner that I can connect things to. Inside the main pack there are two or three separate compartments and uh, there's actually four and I'll show you those. One thing I want to tell you before we get into kits if you're setting up your kit what you want to do is to make sure that you have all of your basics covered. The basics are shelter number one, fire number two, food number three, and water number four. As I already showed you we have water covered uh, and, and that carries in its own separate carrier. Shelter is another thing. As I mentioned, if I'm going out and I know that I'm going to need shelter, I will carry just a tarp on here with me. But I also carry inside a large garbage bag. This is a four foot garbage bag. I believe that it's either four or five mil thick. It's a very, very thick black construction garbage bag. This can be opened up to it's almost eight foot long and uh, about three foot wide. So it will make a tarp in the shelter or in the in the uh, bush. It will also make a poncho. If I just took and opened this up, cut a hole in it, I could put it over me as a poncho, as a pack cover. I could use this to, to gather things in the bush. So there are many, many uses for this. I highly recommend that everybody carries a construction garbage bag. And again, that is our shelter. Secondly is fire. Now, I have a, a whole kit dedicated just to fire in here. It's in the front pack. First off, you've already seen my Strike Force from Gerber. And uh, this is a, a heavy duty fire starter. It has its own striker. It throws really good sparks. It also has a little compartment on the back where I can put extra tinder. And as I said before, I put steel wool in here. It's a quick tinder to catch and it'll burn for a few minutes. You can put cotton balls in here you can put some uh, fat wood or anything that you want to put in there but it's it's kind of convenient little thing it comes on its own carry strap and I can actually take this and put it over my neck along with my knife and have a solid kit just by itself I also carry some extra steel wool and uh, again that's useful for flint and steel fires as well as just getting some tinder started I also carry these this small bag of cotton balls there's a little bit of lint in here some cotton balls and inside of that bag I have a candle. This candle is just a small little candle. It will probably burn for about an hour. It's, it's not anything that's a real big candle. But what it'll do is give me a little bit of extra light or a little bit of extra heat. Especially if I'm sitting inside of a poncho that's made out of uh, either, either a garbage bag like this or a standard poncho. I can have that candle inside to give me some extra heat. Then I carry a fire kit. My fire kit is basically made up of a box which I can use to make char cloth in. You can see there's a little hole in the end. And we will make a video with char cloth later on to show you how to do that. This is just an Altoid cinnamon a tin. Inside of here there's more cotton balls. There's a piece of steel. There's a, uh, I'm sorry, a piece of flint for my flint and steel. There's also a piece of fat wood and this helps start fires up real quick then I have inside here some blue jean just wrapped around char cloth and the reason that I wrap this around is I have char cloth in here enough for probably 20-25 fires but if I was out in an extended period and I got lost and I needed or to make more char cloth I have extra material with me that I can make more. So that is all of my fire kit right there. The last thing in this pouch is my personal kit. This is a first aid kit. It has some cotton balls. It has uh, some aspirin, I believe, inside this little pouch. No, I'm sorry. This little pouch here has aspirin in it. Just some adhesive tape. A few Q-tips a fingernail file. I've got a fingernail file. One of the nice things about this, this is clippers. It also has a file on there 
and that will act as a file as well if I need to file something down in the bush and and that's a good thing to have so it's just a little pair of clippers a lot of people overlook clippers but they're a very important part of your kit uh, I think it's important to take care of your fingers and your feet out in the bush and if you get ingrown toenails or if you have uh, a, a, a piece of skin that needs to be clipped off it's much easier to do it with a, a fingernail clipper than it is to do with your knife so it's a good idea to carry uh, I also carry a small tube of Neosporin this is just an antibacterial little cream that I put in there and then I have a few band-aids uh, I have a couple of regular band-aids and a few knuckle band-aids and those cover all my needs for bandages in this little piece of foil I have wrapped up this is my sewing kit and what this is is a couple of needles from an easy all there's a straight one and a curved one and I can use this with the inside of my paracord to make any repairs to my clothing that I might need to make uh, it has a lot of uses and it's very easy to use so I could just carve a handle out in the bush and do all my repairs with that in the front of this kit there's another pouch I carry a roll of dental floss this happens to be mint but uh, dental floss has a lot of, of benefits out in the bush number one you can use it to make lashings on arrows uh, anything that you're lashing something else too because of the size of it it makes a good wrap you can also use it for the obvious reason to clean your teeth to keep good dental hygiene so I do carry that with me in the bush and anything that cordage could be used for dental floss could be used for to an extent and finally in the outside of this I have a pack of waterproof safety matches uh, these waterproof safety matches happen to be from Kuglins. Uh, they have a striker on the on the box. These are not the best matches there are, but they will work. Finally, inside the main compartment of this kit, we have a whole lot more. You can see already, for even a small kit, we've packed a lot out. I carry a secondary knife. The old saying, two is one and one is none. This is a Gerber. It's a very, very good knife. It's razor blade sharp, and it's good for any kind of small jobs like whittling. I also carry a couple of bandanas with me. Uh, this is a longer one that will fit down the back of my neck. This is a shorter one that I just put on if I just want to get my hair what little of it there is out of my face also in this bag I carry a sling I made this sling out of 550 paracord and I don't really hunt animals very much but it's a good little toy to play with and to practice out in the bush and it gives me a lot of things that I can do also in here is a pair of knee-high pantyhose I'm not a funny kind of guy uh, knee highs are really good to put on underneath of your socks they'll stop you from getting blisters uh, you can wear the regular pantyhose I just wear the knee highs you can also use these to filter acorns if you're trying to make acorn bread you can use them to pre-filter your water before you put it into your bottle to get out any of the major debris uh, you can use it as a different kind of a carrier if you're carrying nuts or if you're, you're gathering berries so it will help you out in a lot of ways. So a pair of knee highs, it packs up very, very small, very lightly, and will be of a big benefit to you out there in the bush. Also, I carry four hanks. These are 24, uh, 25 foot a piece, and these are just a, 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 a nylon cord. These are not paracord, these are just a nylon cord. Uh, this is a good cord, it's strong. The only thing you have to do with this is when you t cut it you really can't cut it you need to burn the ends so 
so that it doesn't unravel because it will unravel immediately but it's a very strong cord you could put up a tarp you could put up a tent and so I carry these one of the reasons I carry a hundred foot of this width is because it's much lighter than standard paracord however I do also carry in here a uh, a couple of hanks of paracord I think this is a 10 foot this is a 25 foot hank and then I have a larger uh, I, I believe this is a 50 foot hank of paracord so I have plenty of cordage to work with out in the bush if you've ever made cordage you know that it's something you really want to carry with you it's a little difficult to make not impossible and actually a lot of fun but if you need to make a lot of cordage in a short period of time it's better to carry it with you I also carry with me a waterproof bag and inside that waterproof bag I have a Peterson's field guide to edible wild plants. Now this will cover my food needs so we've got shelter, fire, water and food all covered and this will cover my food needs out in the bush. Uh, if you, even if you're an expert it's a good idea to have some kind of a reference guide to be able to say okay that's exactly what this is especially if you're in a crisis situation because sometimes you'll be nervous you'll be uh, maybe on bordering on hypothermia or bordering on dehydration you may not make wise decisions so it's always good to carry something like an edible guide with you in the bush I also have the obligatory uh, duct tape roll with me and what I've done here this is probably about 50 foot of duct tape more than enough to fix up a tarp uh, probably enough to build myself a boat if I really needed to so so there's plenty of duct tape in there I carry that in the bottom of my pack and then there's a little compartment on the inside here this more has nice pouches inside on both sides and I carry a couple other things with me some wet ones again for hygiene that goes over with my personal kit I also have some moleskin we talked before about the importance of taking care of your feet. You don't want to get blisters when you're hiking in the bush. And if I do begin to get a blister or a hot spot, I can take this mole skin, cut a small piece off. It attaches right to your foot and adheres to it, and you can use it. It's kind of like a big band-aid. Uh, very inexpensive. I think this mole skin costs two dollars at Walmart, and it's a good thing to have in your kit so that you don't get blisters on your feet. Then I also carry a Fresnel lens. You've seen this in some of our other productions. That Fresnel lens is great at starting fires. It's also good for me because I wear reading glasses to be able to read my wild edibles guide a little bit easier. Uh, finally I have a notebook. This is a notebook my little girl gave me. So it does a couple of different things for me. Number one, it gives me some hope. If I was in a crisis situation I can remember my little girls and uh, how, how much they mean to me. My wife and, and that would help me out. But it also gives me the opportunity to be able to write, to put down notes, thoughts, and ideas. And uh, I go through one of these notebooks every few weeks out in the bush. So you can see there's one, two, three compartments with two interior flaps here. And there's a flap on the inside of this compartment and two little straps to hold things in this compartment. So this is a very nice setup kit. There's also a little keychain in here if you have keys. If I get out of the car, I can put my keys in here, they'll sit right in the bottom of the pack. Also on the bottom of the pack, there are a few holes. If I was to take a dive in the pond or, or to fall into a stream crossing it, this will let the water out so it wouldn't ruin my gear and it would give me a lot of, uh, a lot of help there. Finally, on the back end of this is another pouch. This is a final pouch. And this pouch is actually a concealed weapon carry. This is just a P, uh, P22, Walther P22, and I carry that locked and loaded. And that slips in here. It's got cushioning in there to protect the gun. It's got a snap on there. Uh, if I'm just going around, I'll, I'll usually carry this snap. If I get into a situation, I'll unsnap it, and I wear it with a reverse pull so I can pull it out that way. And I've also taken and I've put in a little pouch on the top of the uh, strap, and that pouch just holds another clip. So I've got another clip available to me and uh, that's that's pretty effective way to be able to carry conceal. So this is the Maxpedition Remora. This is my everyday carry. This is what I normally take if I'm out in the bush. Again you can see there's a lot in here to cover a lot of bases. 
you may carry everything I carry, you may carry less, you may carry more, that's okay. Whatever's comfortable for you is what's important. I am David Wendell with Bushcraft on Fire. We hope you've enjoyed this segment on mini kits and, and how to carry your everyday equipment with you. If you have comments, please feel free to post them, or if there's a video that you'd like to see, let us know on our homepage. We'd love to do what it is that, that you need or that you're looking for to learn a little bit more of. Have a great day, and we'll see you on another video soon.